Today back then, what happened today in modern history? Let's get most smartest. In 1667, blind and impoverished, English poet John Milton sells the copyright for his amazing Paradise Lost for 10 British pounds. How devastating that must have been for him. In 1810, Beethoven finishes composing Furelis. It is one of the most recognized melodies in the history of music. In 1822, Ulysses S. Grant is born and goes on to become the 18th U.S. President. In 1828, the London Zoo opens in Regent's Park. In 1840, the foundation stone for the new Palace of Westminster in London is laid. In 1859, the ship Pomona sinks in the North Atlantic, drowning all 400 people on board. Something wrong with the North Atlantic. In 1861, U.S. President Abraham Lincoln suspends the writ of habeas corpus during the Civil War. Also in 1861, West Virginia secedes from Virginia after Virginia secedes from the Union. In 1865, in the worst maritime disaster in U.S. history, the steamship SS Sultana exploded on the Mississippi River, killing 1,800 people, many of whom were former Union POWs returning home from the U.S. Civil War. Also in 1865, Cornell University in Ithaca, New York is chartered. In 1881, organized massacres of Russian Jews begin in Elizabethgrad. In 1897, Grant's tomb is dedicated, but who is buried there? In 1903, Long Island's Jamaica Racetrack opens. In 1908, the fourth modern Summer Olympic Games open in London. In 1926, in the Giants' 98 win over the Phillies, a 17-year-old Mel Ott makes his first baseball appearance. In 1933, Adolf Hitler authorizes the creation of the Ministry of Aviation. In 1940, Heinrich Himmler orders the creation of the Auschwitz concentration camp. In 1941, German troops occupy Athens, Greece. In 1942, Belgian Jews are forced to wear stars. Also in 1942, a tornado destroys prior Oklahoma, killing 100 people and injuring 300 more. In 1943, Polish resistance fighter Witold Pilecki escapes from Auschwitz after having voluntarily been imprisoned there to gain information about the Holocaust. Wow, that was a risky move. In 1945, Italian partisans capture Benito Mussolini at Lake Como in Italy. Also in 1945, the U.S. Fifth Army enters Genoa, Italy. In 1945 as well, the newspaper of the Nazi Party ceases publication. In 1950, South Africa passes the Group Areas Act, thereby segregating races. In 1953, wrestler Freddie Blassie coins the term pencil neck geek. I just had to throw that one in there. In 1956, undefeated world heavyweight boxing champion Rocky Marciano retires from the ring today. In 1960, South Korean President Sigmund Rhee resigns after 12 years in office. In 1961, NASA launches Explorer 11 into Earth orbit to study gamma rays. Also in 1961, the NFL officially recognizes the Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. In 1964, John Lennon's book of poetry and sketches, in his own right, is published in the United States. In 1965, R.C. Duncan patents a disposable diaper that he calls Pampers. In 1971, baseball player Kurt Flood resigns from the Senators after 13 games, moves to Denmark, and never comes back. In 1974, a Pan Am 707 crashes into the mountains of Bali, killing 107 people. In 1978, a cooling tower collapses at the coal-fired power plant at Willow Island in West Virginia, killing 51 people. In 1979, George Harrison releases Love Comes to Everyone. In 1981, Xerox debuted the first personal computer mouse. Also in 1981, Paul McCartney's band Wings breaks up. In 1982, the trial of John Hinckley begins for the attempted assassination of U.S. President Ronald Reagan. In 1983, with his 3,509th strikeout today, Nolan Ryan becomes the strikeout king of the MLB. In 1984, over 70 inches of snow falls on Red Lake, Montana. In 1987, the U.S. Justice Department bars Austrian Chancellor 
Kurt Waldheim from entering the United States due to his aid of Nazi Germany during World War II. In 1989, Beijing students take over Tiananmen Square in China. In 1992, for the first time in its 700-year history, the British House of Commons is presided over by a female speaker. In 1994, an inspector calls opens at the Royale Theater in New York City for 454 performances. Also in 1994, former U.S. President Richard Nixon is buried in the Nixon Library in California. In 1998, at the Rock for the Rainforest Benefit concert held at Carnegie Hall in New York City, the performers included Sting, Elton John, say it with me now, James Taylor, Madonna, Billy Joel, Joe Cocker, Emmy Lou Harris, Roberta Flack, and Winona Judd. Or is she just Winona? I always get confused by that. In 2002, today was the last successful telemetry from the NASA space probe, Pioneer 10. I wonder where it is now. In 2005, by taking its maiden flight today, the Airbus A380 becomes the world's largest commercial jet. In 2006, construction begins on the Freedom Tower for the new World Trade Center in New York City. In 2011, U.S. President Barack Obama publicly releases a copy of his birth certificate. In 2014, Pope John Paul II was canonized by Pope Benedict XVI. Also in 2014, Ariana Grande's single, Problem, featuring Iggy Azalea, is released. In 2014 as well, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver premieres on HBO. In 2018, the leaders of North and South Korea agree to officially end the Korean War and rid the peninsula of nuclear weapons. Also in 2018, the Swedish band ABBA announced they have recorded new songs for the first time since 1982. But can they regain their super popularity? In 2018 as well, there are mass protests across Spain after five men are convicted of sexual abuse, but not rape, of a teenage girl during the running of the Bulls Festival. In 2019, Pope Francis donates $500,000 from migrants stranded in Mexico trying to reach the U.S. Hmm, I wonder where the money came from. In 2020, global confirmed cases of COVID-19 passed 3 million, with the death toll at 205,000 people. And lastly, in 2021, Pfizer announces it is working on a new antiviral therapy to treat COVID-19 at its onset to prevent hospitalization. Hey, thanks for watching and or listening to today's episode. I hope you give me a thumbs up and that you subscribe to my channel. I truly would appreciate it. I'll see you tomorrow.